right back. Hello and welcome back to a really special video. Now, as you've probably seen, the channel surpassed 4,000 subscribers recently. And that is a really awesome milestone, and I wanted to commemorate it with a Q&A video just like I did for 2,000 subscribers. These questions were submitted by people in my Discord server, and I'm going to go through them, answer them. That is what a Q&A is all about, and we're just going to get right into it with the first question. Now, we're starting off with less of a question and more of a desperate plea for freedom, but it says, please release me from the content dungeon. Also, what is your second favorite color? Firstly, no, but my second favorite color is probably white. My favorite color is, is obviously blue, but if I had to choose a third favorite, I would probably say green. Green is pretty nice. Next, we have a question from Cheeto. When did you start loving the Holy Mackerel? Honestly, I have loved using the Holy Mackerel since I got into TF2. I vividly remember I had like $2 in my Steam balance. I was scrolling through the Steam community market. I bought a whole bunch of random stuff. I think I bought like a Croaking Hazard. I bought a Civic Duke knife and I also bought a minimal wear tiger buffed holy mackerel minimal wear because here's a shocker for you ladies and gentlemen I love fish in real life it's not a meme I want to be a marine biologist so it's just kind of my thing at this point <laughs> and then of course when it comes to the actual game I just love the play style that the fish encourages I love just running in there smacking someone with a fish it is absolutely stupid and that's how I love to play games what would you say to new players who discover TF2 to encourage them? Well, that kind of depends, like, what you're trying to do with the game. Like, if you're just playing it, if you're making workshop items, if you're making videos. I would say if you're just getting into TF2 to play it, have a good time, just the, the normal gamer experience. The biggest thing I would say is that when you first start TF2, there's going to be a learning curve. The game's kind of unforgiving. If you miss your shots, you're going to die horribly. It's just part of the game. I went through this when I started. Started playing TF2, I literally learned mouse and keyboard to play TF2. Before that, I had an Xbox controller that I plugged into my PC. So you can imagine how amazing that gameplay was. What I would do is I would hold W and I would change direction by moving my mouse. It was the most disgusting thing ever. <laughs> my point out of all of this is it might be kind of rocky when you first start TF2, but if you like the game, stick with it. I promise you, you're going to get better, you're going to improve, and you're going to have a lot of fun. This next one is kind of a two-parter, but let me tackle the first one first. Do you have any music genres or artists that you particularly like? Honestly, my music taste is all over the place. It just kind of varies by week. I listen to a lot of video game music, like the TF2 soundtrack. I love the TF2 soundtrack. I listen to a lot of Tom Cardi's music. I listen to like NF. My taste is just, it's very scatterbrained all over the place. Just whatever I happen to be feeling that day. And then we get to the second part. Do you have plans on expanding into other areas of content slash fandoms? If so, how would you ask us about it? That is kind of a loaded question. Um, I'm really happy with TF2. I love TF2. It's my favorite game. And I do experiment with like content with other games and stuff like that that I enjoy. Like you'll see the occasional CSGO video, ARK video, Overwatch video, whatever it is. I just make videos about stuff that I really like. And I'll be starting a week and I'll be like, hey, you know, I really want to do this project. And then I just, I hop on it and I do it. You know, I work on whatever I'm passionate about. But for anyone that might be worried that I'm just going to quit TF2 out of the blue, don't worry, that's not going to happen. I love TF2. I'm sticking around, man. I'm sticking around. Although if you mean like shifting my entire style of content, like if I just one day became a video essay channel or something, yeah, I would, I would definitely ask the audience if that's something you want to see out of me. I do plan to do like the occasional video essay type thing, like not a, not a two hour long video essay, but... I like making videos talking about stuff I like, so you might see some stuff like that in the future. Next one is from Negative. What's one upside and one downside to doing YouTube as a hobby? Honestly, that's kind of a hard one. I mean, there are a lot of upsides to doing YouTube, but there are also quite a few downsides. For me, the biggest upside is just being able to entertain people. That is one of my biggest passions in life. I love entertaining people. I love making people laugh. And the fact that I have this audience that I can make stuff for, and then they watch it, and they enjoy it, and they engage with it, and they join the Discord, and they talk about 
about it. That means a lot to me, man. I, I love that. It makes me really, really happy. Another really big upside is having a platform, having an audience, because then I can support things that I really like. That's what the whole workshop showcase series is about. Me going into the Steam Workshop, bringing my favorite things over and presenting them to you guys. It benefits me because I love showing stuff that I like. It benefits the creators because they get more support and more coverage on their item. And it benefits the audience because it's just entertaining to listen to me talk about items, I guess. As far as downsides go, though, I mean, YouTube is a really slippery slope. It's really easy to get caught up in the numbers and see people that are putting in significantly less effort than you and getting like 10x the views, 10x the subscribers. That sucks. That sucks to see. It's, it's really an algorithm thing and you can do things as perfectly. You can watch all the guides you want, but there is always that chance of that video that you spent three weeks on getting 200 views and no one really caring about it. It's just it's part of doing YouTube and that that really sucks. Though I try to keep myself positive about it, I mean the algorithm has not been the kindest to me over the years, but the way I look at it is, while well, 4,000 subscribers is quote unquote small in, in YouTube terms, I imagine it like I'm on a stage and there are 4,000 people watching what I'm doing. That's a lot of people, dude. That's 8,000 eyes. That's that's a lot of eyes. And if you would have told me two years ago when I first started that I would have 4,000 subscribers and people regularly viewing my content, I would not have believed you. I honestly didn't think I'd get this far. So it's, it's really easy to get sucked into this negativity and being like, you know, I'm, I'm getting shafted by the algorithm. I'm not getting the attention I deserve, blah, 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 blah. But you also got to remember, hey, I have a lot. People support me. That's really cool. You just got to keep that in mind. Another downside is the cost. I think people really underestimate how much time it takes to run a YouTube channel, especially when you're serious about it and you're trying to improve your editing and you're trying to make good stuff. And then, of course, there is also the monetary cost where, you know, <laughs> those unboxing videos, they add up. The computer, the microphone, the monitor, the mouse, the keyboard, all this stuff, you know, like I could probably get away with worse equipment if I wasn't doing YouTube, but you know, I love doing this and to me, it's worth the cost. Will I ever get my returns in terms of money and time that I've spent? Probably not. I don't expect to. I just do this because I absolutely love doing it and it just brings me a lot of joy. Kind of a long answer to a simple question, but I think that's something that's just really important to keep in mind if you plan on doing YouTube. Don't get caught up in the numbers, man. It's just gonna mess you up. Next one is from Latau. Tell me where it all went wrong. 2004. Give honest whoopee cap opinions. Honestly, for being old as dirt, the whoopee cap is pretty nice. I only recently learned that it's a reference cosmetic, and honestly, you could have fooled me, man, because it just, it feels like something that Scout would canonically make and wear himself. It, it just kind of fits. It's a pretty good old hat, and I have no problem with it, man, though I do wish there were more body cosmetics that worked with it. It would be really cool if there was a jacket cosmetic that had, like, the soda caps and the pins and things on it. In general, I just think that would look cool for Scout. I don't know, there's a free idea for you, I guess. When will you quit TF2 and become a YouTuber for a good game like Team Fortress Classic? I'm gonna be honest, I played that game once, I got grenades thrown at me constantly, and I spent half an hour trying to get a crowbar kill. I don't want to go back, that place is scary, dude! In all seriousness, I might do another Team Fortress Classic video at some point. I do want to revisit the game and give it another shot. I think it could be pretty fun. I don't know, maybe at some point I'll do that. What's stopping you from selling all your possessions and living in the woods? Uh... I like my possessions. <laughs> also, there are no mackerel in the woods, so I'm not going, dude. No. If you were to convert all of your TF2 items into Pomsons, how many would there be? That is an absolutely deranged question, and you better believe I'm going to spend the time calculating it. Okay, well, I spent a couple minutes calculating it, and uh, I would have over 5 million Pomsons. <laughs> My inventory is probably worth more. I'm just going off backpack suggested value, which is, you know, never super accurate. Uh, don't use backpack suggested value. There's a bonus tip for you. <laughs> why did you start content creation, and why did you choose the best game on Earth, TF2, for your content? 
I've actually done YouTube since I was a kid, though, of course, all those videos are private and those channels are no longer available, but I did a channel years and years and years ago when I was like 9, 10, 11 years old, something like that, where I would, <laughs> I would, uh, I would take the family camera and the tripod and put it in front of the family TV in our living room, and I would film myself playing like Ark Survival Evolved, Primal Carnage Extinction. I would take that recording. I would not edit it at all. I would just put it on YouTube. It would be like a half an hour video of me just waffling around and playing games. <laughs> oh man, for a sub special, I gotta, I gotta look back on those videos at some point. That would be so fun. I haven't seen them in years, man, but it was a deranged time. Through the years, I've had that channel. I had a Pokemon card channel very briefly. Uh, I, <laughs> I had another gaming channel very briefly. My point is, I've been doing content creation for a really, really long time, just because I really enjoy it. Like I said before, I love entertaining people, and I just, I love sharing stuff that I like, and I really like video games, man, so that's what I'm here to do. As far as why did I pick TF2, it's the same reason. I love TF2, I want to share my love of TF2, uh, come watch me uh, play TF2. Funny, two fort moments, fish crit, skull emoji, XD. <laughs> Oh, this video is turning into word soup. <laughs> why did you choose the name Scout Time and why do you love everything white and blue? Well, the name Scout Time actually started as like a joke between a friend of mine at the time. And through trading, people started knowing me as Scout Time. So the name kind of stuck and I just never changed it. And then over time, I grew to really like the name and I kind of adopted it more and, and I leaned into it. And now that's just kind of my name. My name's Scout Time, you know? It, <laughs> that's my origin story. <laughs> As far as why do I love everything white and blue, those are just my favorite colors. I like how they look. Do you have any advice for people who would like to start content creation about TF2? Same thing I said before, don't focus on the numbers, man. Just do something that you enjoy, put your heart and soul into it. If you enjoy the process of content creation, you like the editing, you like all the audio tweaking and all the more quote unquote boring parts of doing YouTube, you're going to be A-OK, -okay, man. Just stay the course, do what you enjoy. Don't focus on the numbers, just do it for fun and hopefully successful follow. I know some people do YouTube. YouTube or content creation as a whole as the prospect of like doing it as a job professionally. For me, that's not how I look at YouTube. I just do it for fun as a hobby. I have a career outside of this. I'm going to college. I'm doing all that stuff, but I just do this because it's a creative outlet that I really, really love doing. So to summarize, just don't worry too much, man. Have fun. Enjoy the process. Make something that you are passionate about and other people will see that passion and they'll follow you. Were you inspired by another content creator who makes TF2 content? Honestly, I don't watch a lot of TF2 content. I mean, when I was a casual player, I did, but while there are a lot of really, really, really talented creators, I could list them all off. It would take me hours. I don't watch a lot of TF2 content because I kind of want to do my own thing and I don't want to like subconsciously copy anyone, if that makes any sense. I mean, obviously there's only so much originality you can have when you're playing the same game, but I try to keep things unique to me, you know? Though there are creators that inspired me early on in my career, like The Gaming Beaver was a really big inspiration to me since I was a kid. He makes content on like dinosaur games, dinosaur toys, that kind of stuff. Another one was Slimesicle. I think that guy is hilarious. I really like his style of content. He was a really big inspiration for me and he was the reason why I tried my hand at like haha funny moments gaming content, you know? What made you to choose exactly those cosmetics that you have on your scout loadout? Well, believe it or not, the first cosmetic that I chose for my set was actually Bean. I vividly remember being on the Steam community market and Bean was one of the first things I ever bought. I believe one of my first cosmetics that I ever had. I saw an adorable little bird shoulder pet and you know I had to buy it, dude. And the rest has really been history. I added black paint and strange parts and named them. Since the beginning of my TF2 career, I have always had Bean on my shoulder. It's probably my favorite cosmetic in the entire game. The Catcher's Companion is just peak, dude. It is peak. As for the Law and Ticket Boy, they kind of came from riffing off the classic Milkman Scout set, you know? I wanted to do my own take on that, and that's also why I really wish there was a better suit cosmetic in TF2, because the Ticket Boy reeks of being extremely old, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I picked the Law because it can be strange, it's all class, and in my opinion, it's just much, much, much better made. 
the milkman is a good hat but for me it 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 shows its age a little bit you know and i just like how the law looks a lot more i spent a lot of time thinking about my loadouts refining them making them exactly how i want them and some of my loadouts have gone through a couple different versions which you can probably see if you look back on older videos but for the most part everyone's been pretty consistent and that's just because i really love my sets i picked out my favorite cosmetics in the game mixed them around in a way that made sense and you know that's what i use what is your favorite piece of fan art slash something you commissioned I gotta say my favorite piece has gotta be the incredible YouTube banner that Raskon did for me. It is, it is gorgeous, man. And I, I've gotten so much amazing fan art and I'm grateful for every single piece. I love, love, love receiving fan art. I could talk about pieces that I really like all day long, but as far as my favorite one, I, I gotta go with the banner, dude. It's, it's just beautiful, man. It is beautiful. Someday, I genuinely want to get, like, a really big print of it and hang it up on my wall. Like, 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 painting size, you know what I mean? I think that would look awesome, and I, it's gonna happen someday. It's gonna happen. Have you ever thought about doing merchandise? Yes, yes, I have. I really, really, really want to do a bean plushie. I really want to do it. I don't care if I make any money on it. I just want it to exist and I want one sitting on my shelf. It, it needs to happen, dude. It needs to happen. There was actually fan art of a concept of what a scout time slash bean plushie could look like. And honestly, it's pretty close to what I have in mind. So you, you never know. You never know what might happen. If I ever get the opportunity, I'll probably jump on it, man. I don't care about the money. I literally do not care at all about making a dollar off it. I just want it to exist, you know? So don't expect any $50 plushies out of good old scout time, okay? I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna upcharge like that. <laughs> Do you have a favorite mollusk or cephalopod? I gotta say, man, I love cuttlefish. They are adorable. They are just little guys. They're just little guys floating around in the ocean, and I love them so much for being just that. They're just, they're the best. They're just the best thing. How high can you see tap rocket jump? What what does that even mean? <laughs> there are other TF tubers that do workshop content, but you have your own unique style to it. What made you decide to give it a shot and how did the series evolve over time? That's actually a really good question. So my first couple workshop videos, which are at this point like two years old, that is insane to think about. Uh, I'm going to have an existential crisis. <laughs> but those original like four workshop videos, those were pretty much made with like, I want to do something for the update that might get some views. And th those videos were my first interactions with the workshop. Before that, I never really got into the workshop. I never really like connected the dots that all of the items were community made, you know what I mean? I just never paid it much attention. And then when I started like engaging with the workshop and seeing all of the amazing work that's on there, I slowly began to just get more ingrained into the scene. And now, you know, I talk with workshop creators, I collab, I make stuff, I do workshop war paint promos now. Like, I, it's fun, man. It's a really fun scene to be a part of. So I guess you could say it started out as me trying to get a video out that would get clicks, but it ended, well, I say ended, I'm still, I'm still doing workshop content. Don't worry, I'm not leaving you. Uh, <laughs> but at this point, it's just something that I genuinely love. I love the workshop scene. I love seeing all the works in progress and just seeing the process of stuff get made. I think that's really interesting. Do you love casting spells? Shadow Wizard Money Gang. What's the scout cosmetic you hate the most? I don't even have to think about this. It's the hero's tail. It is, it is abhorrent. It is so poorly made, it is so poorly stylized, and I don't feel bad about bashing it because it's Valve made or CD Projekt made, I don't know. It's not community made, so I will harp on this thing until the end of time. It is so poorly made. The stylization does not make any sense, and all anybody uses it for is, haha, I made Scout look like a girl. I don't like it, man. I do not like that cosmetic. Burn it! Burn it in a fire! <laughs> this next one comes from Z and he asks, what got you interested in TF2? Now this is kind of a generic answer, but honestly it was the Meet the Team videos. It was the, I think they, I think it was called the Meet the Amazing series by Pymations. Those, I, I love those. 
I was playing a lot of Overwatch at the time. I was playing Overwatch for like a year or so on my PS4, and I was just getting really tired of the game. I didn't like how team focused it was, you know? So then ironically, I tried Team Fortress 2. I literally learned mouse and keyboard just to play that game. <laughs> and I just fell in love with it, man. I love everything about TF2. I love the gameplay, the items, the characters, the community. I think there's just, there's a lot to love about TF2, man. Next up, what is your end goal for your YouTube channel? That one's kind of a hard one to answer. I, I don't really have an end goal in mind because I really enjoy doing YouTube. It's that creative outlet that I think I really need. I really could not see myself entirely quitting. Now, of course, someday I'm going to have more responsibilities. I'm going to have a proper job, all that stuff going on. But I don't think I would ever outright completely quit. I think I would just upload less. You know what I mean? The main goal for me is just to grow my audience, entertain more people. That's all I really want to do with my channel. I just want to keep doing things that I enjoy, making videos out of it, uploading them, and hopefully a couple people get a laugh out of it. Next one, how do you stay motivated? Well, honestly, that's just kind of built into me. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a workaholic. If I'm sitting doing nothing for too long, I just, I'm not happy. So I try to keep myself busy with different things, whether it's like actual work or college or working on a video or something dumb like sorting Pokemon cards or, you know, whatever I'm up to that day. Just something, something to do. As far as YouTube goes, I just naturally stay motivated because it's something I really like. And, you know, uh, when I'm in the middle of making something, sometimes I'll get the idea for like a different video or some game I want to play or some weapon I want to try out or just some video idea that I really want to do. And it gets me excited. I get hyped about it. I'm excited to go make that video, you know, and that really drives me to just keep making new videos. What would your dream item be, in-game or not in-game, not the Sunday vest? Well, if you're going to exclude it, okay, okay, let me think about this. At this point, I kind of have most of the items that I've really wanted for years. Like, I've built up kind of an insane collection uh, over the time I've been playing this game. One thing has eluded me for a long, long time, though. I really, someday, I want to get a strange Mad Milk that has a glitched specialized killstreak kit. They do exist, they are very rare, and I really want either a Team Shine or a Deadly Daffodil one. I think that would be really cool. Also, an honorable mention goes to the Unholy Mackerel. If, if that thing ever gets in, it, it's gonna be a massive day. If you had one choice of food to eat for the rest of your life, what would it be? Now, I'm really, 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 really inclined to just say like milkshakes or steak or something like that. If I'm thinking about it practically, what is like, because it can be any food, right? It can be like a dish that is a combination of all the food groups. So if I got a dish that's like all the food groups, I would be nutritionally satisfied for the rest of my life. The only problem is I'm American. I don't know what those dishes are. Um, I, I guess I'll just say cheeseburger. I don't know. Favorite workshop item ever, excluding the Sunday vest. Man, you guys really like excluding the Sunday vest because you know that's what I'm going to answer. I think favorite is a really hard one to answer because I have so many items that I just absolutely love on the workshop, dude. There are so many amazing items that I really want to see get in. But if I'm being selfish and I'm picking like my favorite that I personally really like, I gotta say the unholy mackerel, man. I love that thing. I think it's super funny. It's amazing how it hasn't already gotten in the game. I don't know how it hasn't gotten in. Please, Val, come on. Scream Fortress 2023. It's the year of the unholy mackerel. Scout time, what do you think of the heavy class in TF2? I actually really enjoy playing heavy. I think if you're running around with the Tommy Slav, especially, I love the play style that the Tommy Slav encourages. I think heavy is a lot of fun, man. I think he's kind of slept on a little bit. I know his gameplay is basically just boiled down to hold two buttons and aim at people, but hey, sometimes it feels good, you know, just to be this big hulking guy with a massive gun, you shred through everybody. It's a good time, man. It's a good time. Red grapes or green grapes? Green without question. Are you kidding me? I don't even want to have a debate on this. Green is just superior. Any, If any of you are in red grape gang, I, I cannot even look you in the eye. If you couldn't play Scout anymore, who would you play? Honestly, 
I'd probably play Spy. Now, I know Spy mains get a bad rap, but the way I play Spy is very similar to how I play Scout, where I'll go for, like, really stupid trick stabs. I'll just be places that I shouldn't be at times that I shouldn't be there, and I, it just amuses me, man. I like doing that. All right, dumb question. If Z and your girlfriend were hanging on a cliff, who would you save if you had to choose? Oh man, that's 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 a hard one. That's a hard one. I really got to think about that. Just kidding. I I've already decided the instant I read that question. Are you kidding me? I would willingly let Z fall off that cliff. I would watch. I would listen for the splat. Are you kidding me? That's not even a question. Even if he was the only person on the cliff, I would still let him fall. It would be funny. I'd film it. I'd make a vlog out of it. It would be it would be great. It'd be great content. Honestly, you have to admit it would be great content. <laughs> When did you peak? Honestly, I don't think I've peaked yet. I don't think I've peaked yet. Cause like I've had successful videos and I've had periods where my channel has popped off a little bit, but I haven't had like that really big spark explosion, huge growth moment. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of been a very consistent, gradual growth over time, which I'm totally cool with, but I don't think I've peaked yet, man. Let me cook. All right, let me cook. If you were to buff slash nerf one weapon, what would it be and how? I'm gonna be honest, man, I don't know a lot about game balance, and I I don't have many game balance opinions, it's gotta be said, but I do have a couple opinions that I hold very near and dear to my heart. One, the Mad Milk is kinda busted if you know how to use it. There's a reason it's banned and competitive, okay? You throw that on the entire group of enemy gamers, and if your team follows up on that, you basically just instantly win the team fight. It's kind of crazy. I think the Mad Milk should be more about giving you the scout survivability, like it already is. Just why is it healing my entire team? That's kind of nuts, man. I use the Mad Milk to let me get away with stupid fish memes most of the time, so... You know, just, that's all I want, man. I don't want to win team fights. I just want to fish a sniper. Speaking of fish, why does the Holy Mackerel not have a taunt kill? That is the buff I want to see. The Holy Mackerel needs a taunt kill. It It is literally designed to be a meme weapon and to tilt people. Why does it not have a taunt kill? I don't understand. What is the best nerf gun in your opinion? I don't know about best, okay? I don't know what's like, <laughs> quote unquote, competitively viable in Nerf. I gotta say my favorite is the rough cut. I love that thing, dude. That is a beast. It's not practical at all, but if you dual wield them, the ergonomics on that, it's fire. It is fire. I also think that flare gun that they did recently was pretty cool, like the break action. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but it's a lot like Pyro's flare guns, which I thought was neat. And then also bonus points to the Alpha Trooper, because that was like the first nerf gun I ever got. I love that thing, dude. My uncle got it for me. Fire gun. Absolutely goaded. What would you say is the most underrated weapon in the entirety of TF2? That is honestly a hard one. I got to think about that. I don't know, I'm kind of caught between like three of them. I think a lot of people don't know how strong the Mad Milk is. At the same time, the Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol is kind of insane. It would be really, really used, I think, if the Mad Milk didn't exist. If I had to pick one though, I would probably go with Spy's Revolver. Like, everybody has it. Why don't you use yours, man? You know how quickly you can melt somebody that's chasing after you? You don't have to trick stab everyone. Can you count to 4,000 without any help? All right, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> One, two, three. Uh, I'm tired. <laughs> If you were to ever learn a second language, what would it be and why? Spanish. Spanish in a heartbeat, dude. My girl speaks Spanish, and I would love to understand what she's saying. <laughs> Just to make sure she's not dissing me behind my back. <laughs> And the final question, how does having this many subscribers feel? I gotta say, man, it, it feels really good. It feels really, really good. I've put a lot into this channel. I've put a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money, but mostly time and effort. <laughs> This channel, it means a lot to me. It means a lot that I get to make these videos and that I can entertain people, make them laugh, 
some of them even caring enough to join my Discord server and write questions for me to answer. That's kind of nuts, man. That's kind of nuts. And again, I just want to say thank you for 4,000 subscribers. It has been an amazing couple of years, and I'm just really, really grateful for everyone that has stuck around watching the videos. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. But with that, that is going to be the end of the official 4,000 subscriber special Q&A video. I will see you in the next one.